Jackson. Oh, George, we've got company. This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, Makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castile's. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen. Our guests, the MGM star Charles Lawton and his charming wife Elsa Lanchester, Jimmy Cash and Felix Mills and his orchestra. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Gee, that's a swell-looking Christmas tree you got, Gracie. Oh, isn't it handsome? I picked this tree for sentimental reasons. You did? Yes. You see how it's little at the top and spreads out at the bottom? What's uh, sentimental about it? It reminds me of you. (laughs) Thanks, dear. Won't it be wonderful, darling, spending another Christmas together? You bet. And this year it's got to be a real white one. A white Christmas? Yes. Gracie, it never snows in Hollywood. Oh, I didn't mean that. But remember the sheets we sent to the laundry six months ago? Oh, they're back. Yes. (laughs) Yes. We'll have a white Christmas and a starchy New Year, yes. Oh, remember our first Christmas, George? You were dating me then. Sure, I remember. You kissed me under the mistletoe. My, you were a fiery lover. (laughs) I, uh, I was? Yeah. Oh, look, we're under the mistletoe now. How about a kiss? Oh, Gracie. Oh, I... come on. I want to see if your kisses are still fiery. Okay. <laughs> well? Oh, I guess they're not making mistletoe like they used to. <laughs> well, come on, we better get busy and trim the tree. All right, and then we'll go to the pageant rehearsal. Pageant rehearsal? Oh. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Nigel Bolingbroke is staging a Christmas pageant. I'm the Snow Queen, and you're going to be Santa Claus. Look, I'm not going to be Santa Claus for that broken-down pool room bum. But, George, it's a wonderful part. You come down the chimney and put presents in the bottles that are hanging by the fireplace. Wait a minute, and wait then... a minute. Uh, bottles are hanging by the fireplace? Yeah, liquid stockings. <laughs> Oh, I see. Oh, you'll be such a cute little Santa Claus with a pillow stuffed in your coat and a Gracie, long... Gracie, Gracie, I'm not going to be in the pageant. Well, you're very silly, dear. A talent scout might see you. Why, Lana Turner was discovered just sipping a soda in a drugstore. Well, maybe Lana Turner had more to offer than I would a Santa Claus. Oh, I don't know. With a pillow in front of you, you'd have... Never mind, never mind. <laughs> Come in. Greetings, good people. Tis I, Bolingbroke. Oh, hello, maestro. I was just telling George that we want him to play Santa Claus in our pageant. Yes, and I turned it down, cue ball. Why, you can't be serious, Burns. What a pageant it will be. The very thought of the first scene warms my heart. As the curtain rises, the stage is crowded with little children. Little tots too young to have an agent all working for nothing. (laughs) Yes, that would warm your heart. And then, tally-ho, out upon the stage comes jolly old St. Nick in his sleigh. Drawn by his faithful reindeer, Dunder and Blitzen, Dancer and Prancer, Comet and Garrett Lidecker. <laughs> Comet and Garrett Lidecker? It's an actor friend of mine. Though reduced to playing a reindeer, he insists upon full billing. <laughs> Look, I don't want to have anything to do with this broken-down pageant. Uh. Apparently, Mrs. Burns, we must seek elsewhere for a sucker, a Santa. (laughs) Oh, I've got it. The perfect Santa Claus, Charles Lawton. Oh, stop. Well, he's already got a big bundle. (laughs) All he has to do is move it around to the back. Gracie, you'll never get a man like Charles Lawton to be in the silly pageant. Hi, Hi, folks. Am I interrupting anything? Not a thing, Bill. Well, friend Goodwin, I'm so happy to see you. Your arrival is most opportune. Will a half a buck be enough? (laughs) Don't be crude, my dear fella. I merely wish to proffer you the role of Santa Claus in our Christmas pageant. Oh, well, you're too late, Cue Ball. I'm taking Santa's place at the department store Toyland this week. Oh, really, Bill? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll bet it's fun giving the kiddies presents. Oh, it is, Gracie. You ought to see their little faces light up when they unwrap them and say... Ooh, look, Sandy gave me a great big bar of swan. <laughs> uh, 
that's, uh, that's the present. Well, sure, George. Swan, the new white floating soap is a present for the whole family because it's four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, a wonderful soap for bathing the baby, and perfect for dishes and light laundry. Four swell soaps in one, a great wartime buy. Well, Bill, what if a little girl asks for a doll? Oh, uh, Bill has a special bar of swan that says mama when you break it in two. <laughs> well, the little girls like to climb up on my lap and have me tell them how to wash the dishes with swan. I tell them about those long-lasting swan suds, and I tell them that swan is so mild and gentle they don't have to worry about rough dish panty hands. They like that, huh? Oh, sure, fascinates them. Why, yesterday, a little girl named Nancy sat in my lap for a half hour. Well, is she big enough to wash the dishes? Well, I think so. <laughs> She's 22. <laughs> oh, well, if Bill won't be our Santa Claus, I'd better get in touch with Mr. Lawton right away. Oh, now, Gracie, surely you're not serious about this. Surely you wouldn't bother a great actor like Charles Lawton with the silly pageant. I know I can trust you. <laughs> Mama's little dreamer. Gracie, I want you to promise me that you won't ask him. Well... Go on, promise. All right, I promise. Good. Now behave yourself while I go down to the cigar store. Well, I'd better start for Mr. Lawton's house. Well, Gracie, you just promised George. I promised I wouldn't ask Mr. Lawton to be Santa Claus. Yes? But I didn't promise I wouldn't ask his wife to ask him. Oh, oh! you're going to talk to Mrs. Lawton, Elsa well, Lanchester. sure, sure. The way to a man's heart is through his wife. I thought it was through his stomach. Well, in Mr. Lawton's case, there's a shorter way. Why, Gracie. Hello, Elsa. Come in, dear. It's been ages since I've seen you. Yes, I guess the last time was at Maggie Ettinger's party. That's right. Charming affair, wasn't it? Oh, delightful. She's such a wonderful hostess. Of course, the sandwiches were terribly small. True, and the cocktails were rather poisonous. And the flowers on the table were all droopy. Most of the guests were droopy, too. <laughs> yeah, and Maggie had on the same dress she's worn at the last three parties. The last four? But it really was a charming party. Oh, delightful. Well, i better get down to business, Elsa. Do you think Charles would like to play Santa Claus in a Christmas pageant? Santa Claus? Yes. It would be a nice change from his movie work, and I know how tiring that can be. What do you mean? Well, George and I saw him in a picture not long ago, and I remember saying, George, Charles must be working too hard. He doesn't look well. What picture was that? Uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> yes, he did look a bit seedy in that one. But he'd look fine as Santa Claus. Why don't you have George play the part? Well, I asked him to, but he wouldn't do it. You mean he refused? Uh-huh. But that's ridiculous. It's absurd. After all, he's only a husband. Well, doesn't Charles ever refuse? I should say not. He wouldn't dare. Gracie. Does George wear the pants in your house? Well, not so much in the house, but always when he goes out. <laughs> I mean, is, is he boss? Oh, sure, sure. You've obviously let him get out of hand. Can't you control him at all? Well, George was pretty well under control the first few years we were married, but then my mother left. <laughs> But, Gracie, the wife must be boss. For example, Charles serves me breakfast in bed. Does George do that? Oh, no, no. He makes me come down to the table before he serves mine. <laughs> what about closing the windows and turning the heat on in the morning? Oh, well, I've been doing that recently. It's icy cold in the room when we wake up. Paul, the more reason why you should make George do it. Oh, I don't have the heart, Elsa. He lies there and looks at me so pathetically with those two big blue lips. <laughs> You're too soft, Gracie. Be like me. Keep Charles under your thumb. My. I lay down the law and he obeys it. Gee. I crack the whip and he jumps. Really? Absolutely. And to prove it, I, I promise you that Charles will play Santa Claus because I'll order him to play it. Oh, you're sweet. So full of the real Christmas spirit. Come on, come on. Let's go up to the attic. There's a red flannel nightshirt there that I, that I made him stop wearing. It might do for part of the costume. Well, why did you make him stop wearing it? Oh, bad for my nerves. He looked exactly like a burning building. <laughs> Well, 
Well, while the girls were in the attic, Mr. Lawton came home. He just hung up his hat when there was a knock at the door. Oh, hello. Come on in, George. Oh, thanks, Charles. Thanks. Say, Charles, I'm looking for Gracie. Is she here? Why, George, how flattering. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought uh, maybe uh, I asked Gracie... Uh, uh, I, I, I asked Gracie to tell you that she, uh, for you not to be in her Christmas passion. I told her not to do it, but I thought maybe she did anyway. You meant she might have disobeyed you? Uh, sure. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's absurd. After all, she's only a wife. Well, uh, doesn't Elsa ever disobey you? I should say not. She wouldn't dare. You're too soft, George. You let Gracie run over you. Really? Certainly. You're the husband. You're entitled to be boss. Who brings the money in your family? Who earns the living? I say you, you, you are in rather an awkward spot, aren't you? <laughs> Yes, I, I guess so. Believe me, I keep Elsa under my thumb. My. I lay down the law and she obeys it. Gee. I crack the whip and she jumps. Really? Absolutely. Uh, you wear the pants around here, huh? I haven't had them off in 17 years. <laughs> Boy, uh, you, you go out whenever you want to, huh? Not a question. Your wife doesn't complain when you have the boys over for poker? She wouldn't dare. Well, how does she feel about smoking cigars in the living room? I'd never let her do it. <laughs> no, I... I mean, can you do it? I do as I please. And if Elsa so much as raises an eyebrow at me, I turn her across my knee and spank her. What was that, Charles? Oh, hello, darling. <laughs> I didn't know you were home. Evidently not. Gracie... Give me that flannel nightshirt. Oh, here you are, Elsa. Charles, take this to your room and sew legs on it. You're going to be Santa Claus. But, 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 uh, but, uh, Don't Angel argue Dory, uh, with me, fat boy. <laughs> go to your room. Yeah, yes, dear. Oh. George Burns, you go and help him. But, Gracie... Don't argue with me, skinny boy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our popular young tenor, Jimmy Cash, with Felix Mills in the orchestra, and an old favorite that's coming to the fore again, a ballad called Home. Jimmy? <laughs> brings to me dreams of days that used to be memories of those I love the best when shadows fall and trees whisper days ending my thoughts are ever So you don't wear the pants in your family after all. No, George, I confess. I wear the girdle. 
I can't believe it. A big guy like you afraid of your wife. It's a secret I've kept from the whole world. Why, outside of my home, everyone's afraid of me. Policemen tremble when I talk to them. Truck drivers get out of my way. Department store clerks actually wait on me. <laughs> but at home, you're a milk toast. Yes, it's terrible. I, I went to a psychoanalyst. What did he say? He said, talk back to your wife. Don't be afraid of her. He was a single man. <laughs> I guess that. But, Charles, why are you so afraid of Elsa? Does she beat you? Oh, of course not. That's just the point. She's sweet to me, and I love her. But I want to be boss, and she won't let me. <laughs> I long to be the caveman type. I go to a Humphrey Bogart picture and just sit there and drool. <laughs> well, haven't you ever gotten up uh, enough nerve to do anything about it? Well, once I did lose my temper. Elsa criticized my work. That got you, huh? Yeah. So I took off my apron, threw down my broom, and walked out of the house. <laughs> You're a tiger. You know... Come in. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Lawton. I was looking for Gracie. Oh, hello, George. Hello, Bill. Charles, this is Bill Goodwin. How do you do? Well, gee, this is a lot, and you don't have to stick your tongue out at me. <laughs> That's his lip. He's pouting. Oh. He's hand-packed. Oh, go on. Not Charles Lawton. He's too tough. Well, I can still hear him saying, Mr. Christian, come here. Scrub my back with swan. <laughs> I don't recall that. <laughs> well, Charles, you must try it sometime. Swan's not only great for your bath or for bathing the baby, but it's just the soap for dishes and light laundry. Swan's the new white floating soap that's four swell soaps in one. Say, Bill, we're serious. Gracie saw Elsa dominate Charles, and now I'm henpecked, too. Well, what are you, George, a man or a mouse? Get tough with Gracie. Scare her. How? Tell her I'll leave her? No, don't bribe her. Scare her. <laughs> Bill. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you how both of you can scare your wife. How? Uh, tell him. Tell him you won't let him bathe the babies with Swan. What babies? Well, any babies. Oh. Swan's great for all of them. Doctors recommend it because it's pure as fine Castile's, and it's so mild it's kind even to a little baby's tender skin, which, incidentally, is a tip-off to the fact that it's swell for your hands and face, your complexion. Say, Charles, maybe we should try to scare our wives. You're right. If we're ever going to get the upper hand, now's our chance. While there's a shortage of men. <laughs> right. Now you're talking. Once and for all, end that myth about the better half. You, we will. There's no such thing as a better half. Both halves are equally good. Sure. So when you break swan and two, put half in the kitchen and half in the bathroom. <laughs> So long, Bill. You can, you can put your half in the bathroom for your tub or shower. Out, Bill. Or you can put it in the kitchen for the dishes or light laundry. Out. George, let's go in there and pin their ears back. Okay. We'll show them who's boss. You said it. We'll scare the life out of them. I'll say we will. You go first. <laughs> well, we better go in together. You're right. United we stand. That's the stuff. Nothing can stop us. Now you're talking. We're husbands on the warpath. That's us. Let's have a drink first. <laughs> That's a good idea. One quick one to give us nerve. Yes, I'll cut some lemon and put on the teapot. Mm. Oh, <laughs> never mind that. Let's go in and get, get this over with. Right you are. It's now or never. Sure. Our wives can't push us around. I'll say. Men are meant to be masters, not women. Right. Do you think we'd better arm ourselves? <laughs> oh, come on. We're not afraid of them. Remember Captain Blog. Very well. Are you with me? Yes. Let's go. Good. Mrs. Lawton. Mrs. Burns. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Sit down. Sit down. We are sitting. Then stand up. <laughs> stand up. Charles, what is the meaning Quiet. of Quiet. We have come to deliver an ultimatum. Yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> Henceforth, we will give the orders, not you. And to start with, we will not play Santa Claus. That's right. So you can take this Santa Claus suit and stuff it in the chimney. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, my goodness, what happened? Charles must have gotten into my vitamin capsules. <laughs> well, Elsa, if we let them get away with this, we're sunk. You're right. They might tell other husbands and organize. Yeah. And men are scarce now, even men like ours. <laughs> um, I don't know what to do. I, I've never seen Charles like this before. Oh, I could handle your husband, but I wouldn't know what to do with George. Oh, George is no problem. Yeah. Say, I have an idea. I'll handle your husband and you handle mine. 
It's a deal. Mr. Burns, may I see you alone for a moment? Why, of course, Elsa. Oh, and Mr. Lawton, I'd like to speak with you. What is it, Elsa? Sit down, George. I'll sit here at your feet. Well, if that's the way you like it, it's... <laughs> your feet have so much character, George. What size are they? Elevens. <laughs> the best size. There can be no nonsense about a man who has so much of him on the ground. <laughs> Look, if you're trying to flatter me into playing Santa Claus, oh, you... Oh, no, George. I admire you for refusing. You are so virile, so masterful. Well, Charles spoke up, too. Only because he had your strength to lean on. Really? <laughs> you are strong, aren't you, George? Well, I'm not exactly a panty waist. <laughs> Modest boy. Flex your arm and let me feel your muscle. Okay. Grab hold. Go on. Flex it. It's flexed. <laughs> How nice to have smooth muscles that don't make lumps. Yeah. Your personality and your gorgeous, resonant voice. Amos, babe, all by myself. Oh, you sing, too. I, of course. Do you ever sing any lighter things, such as Christmas carols? Oh, sure. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Magnificent, George. Oh, what fun it is to ride. In a one-horse open sleigh. Incredible. You actually seem to have bells that swing back and forth in your throat. Oh, it's a town souls. <laughs> what a pity the world must be robbed of such beauty. Huh? If you played Santa Claus and made your entrance singing jingle bells, it would be the theatrical event of the century. Bigger than the Avon Comedy Fall? Uh, I think so. Well, why discuss it? I admire the stand you've taken, and you mustn't change it. Wait a minute. You can't tell me what to do. I can't? No. If I want to play Santa Claus, nobody can stop me. Oh, George, you're so strong. So terribly strong. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> So, Mrs. Burns, if you have any notion of wheedling me into the part of Santa Claus in your moth-eaten pageant, forget it. I won't do it, and that's final. Then I may as well go? You may as well. All right. I won't bother you anymore. May I have a picture of you to take with me? You women seem to... Th picture of me. <laughs> yes, and, and if it's not too much trouble, please sign it. To Gracie, from the greatest actor of all time. Oh, it's no trouble at all, my dear. Uh, do you really think I'm the greatest? Oh, certainly. I've seen lots of actors, but your head and shoulders and so on and so forth above them all. Well, very well. Here's your picture. But you didn't write from the greatest actor of all time. It's stamped on all my pictures. <laughs> oh, my, you're handsome. I can't understand those silly people who stand in line for hours to see a Errol Flynn movie. I wait until one of your pictures is playing, and then I go right in and pick out the best seat in the house. I had no idea you were such a devoted admirer. Oh, I'm not the only one. You know, I saw a revival of Henry VIII not so long ago, and when you played one scene, the whole audience was in tears. Uh, the scene where I was a feeble, broken old man. No, the scene where you took a big bone with lots of meat on it and threw it to the dog. <laughs> One time, that was considered quite amusing. <laughs> I love to hear you deliver lines, Mr. Larkin. Those rich, beautiful sounds come pouring out of you like wine out of a barrel. Um, uh, 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 thank you, I think. <laughs> I'll bet you could take just any old words and make them sound wonderful. Like, for instance, ho dancer, ho prancer. Doesn't Santa Claus say that to his reindeer? Yes. Try it. Ho dancer, ho prancer. 
So it does sound good. Of course it does. But I'm, I'm not satisfied. I, I see Dancer as a more delicate deer than Prancer. Or, how's this? Um, ho, Dancer. Ho, Prancer. Oh, oh you're cute. <laughs> no, 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 no. Prancer needs to be polished. I see Prancer as a frisky animal, always kicking up his heels, something like this. Ho, Dancer. Ho, 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 Prancer. <laughs> Such a great performance should never be heard. But it shall be heard. I insist that it be heard. Oh, you're so masterful, Charles. I guess I'll have to give in. Well, Tracy, your problem is solved. George is in there, and he's agreed to play Santa Claus. What? Over my dead body? <laughs> <laughs> well, Gracie, it looks like you're going to have two Santa Clauses for your pageant. Well, yeah. I think the admission tickets will have to be brown ration stamps. <laughs> well, won't we be giving the audience the two biggest hams in the world? <laughs> George and Gracie will be right back, friends. And meanwhile, I'd like to remind you that because we're all busy these days, every little convenience can be a big help. Like four-in-one swan soap, for instance. You see, one soap, swan, the new white floating soap, is swell for baby's bath, your own bath and complexion, dishes, and light laundry. Yes, swan is four soaps in one. And a great wartime buy. And now, from the makers of swan, Christmas greetings to you all. And here again, our radio's ever-loved Mr. and Mrs., George and Gracie. Say, George, you know who our guest is next week? John Garfield. Oh, sure. Oh, that poor boy. He's always been throwing into prison. Oh, yes. They throw him into prison for $30,000 a week. <laughs> Say, do you think we can spring him in time for our show? I'll talk to his agent. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Our thanks to our guests tonight, Elsa Lanchester and her husband, Charles Lawton, who appeared with the kind permission of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Thousands Cheer. The makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your Columbia station again next week, same time, when we'll have as our guest, John Garfield. Remember, George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS, next Tuesday night. And now till next Tuesday, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? And also adding, tomorrow night, don't miss the big radio treat of this year and every year. Lionel Barrymore as old Scrooge in Charles Dickens' immortal Yuletide story, A Christmas Carol. It'll be broadcast over most of these same stations at this same time tomorrow night. Get the whole family to listen to Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol starring Lionel Barrymore, the only time this season that Mr. Barrymore will broadcast this great Christmas story. Good night, everyone. Thank you.